The Max Fleischer Superman cartoons of the 1940s and their creators are legendary. Join me as we look back on these classic cartoons, The Man of Steel's big screen debut. Stay tuned for the video. Anachronic. No one can argue against the fact that since his creation in 1938, Superman has become one of the most iconic and beloved characters in popular culture. He has transcended the generations and continues to inspire people of all ages. This includes the movies and TV, of course. A few of the more notable successes include two black and white Superman 15 episode serials released in 1948 and 1950. The production description for a two DVD set states, Kirk Allen sets the heroic standard for generations to come, portraying Superman in these fun, multi-chapter cliffhanger adventures. The first, the 15-chapter Superman, spans our hero's first arrival on Earth to his alter ego role as reporter Clark Kent of the Daily Planet through his battle with the sinister Spider Lady and her relativity reducer Ray. Next, while the real world faced the dawn of the nuclear age, our caped hero faced the menace and more in the 15-part Adam Man vs. Superman serial. Is Lex Luthor behind the UFO? An A-bomb that imperils Metropolis? Nah, he says he's just a simple repairman for those new devices called televisions. I watch these and they're great fun. One area where they were lacking was portraying Superman flying. Superman's flight sequences were animated instead of live action or model work, and the animation left a lot to be desired. The first feature-length Superman movie was released in 1951. It stars George Reeves as Superman and Phyllis Coates as Lois Lane. The movie, Superman and the Mole Men, led to the creation of the Adventures of Superman television series in 1952. The series, which ran for six seasons, was one of the most successful television shows of its day. In 1978, Superman made his first appearance on the big screen in Superman the Movie. The movie was a huge hit and launched a series of Superman movies in the 1980s. In 2013, Superman returned to the big screen in the highly anticipated Man of Steel. The movie launched a new wave of interest in the character. So how did this all start? In 1941, the first of a series of 17 Superman cartoons was released. The cartoons were a hit with kids and adults alike. Superman was now a fully fledged multimedia star with a comic book, radio show, merchandise, and cartoons. In 1940, Republic Studios, a motion picture production company, and distribution company was negotiating for the movie rights to Superman. But they balked at the price tag set by the comic book publisher and rejected the demand for creative control by Superman's parent company, National Periodical Publications. After negotiations broke down, Paramount was able to obtain the rights. Now, Paramount turned to the Fleischer Studio, an animation studio that it had purchased. Fleischer Studios was founded in 1929 by the brothers Max and Dave Fleischer, who ran the pioneering company from its inception until its acquisition by Paramount. At the time, the Fleischer Studios was second only to Walt Disney Company, responsible for famous cartoon characters, uh, Popeye the Sailor Man and Betty Boop, among others. Writing on their successes, the Fleischer brothers Max and Dave had recently relocated to a new and bigger studio in Miami, where in 1939 they produced their first full-length animated film, Gulliver's Travels. Popular thought is that the brothers resisted on taking on Superman for a number of reasons and tried to dissuade Paramount with a quote of $100,000 per episode, which was four times the budget of an average cartoon. Are you out of your mind? And they wanted production time of seven months, which was more than double the normal time frame. Now, as the story goes, the brothers were certain Paramount would object, 
but the studio didn't, though the costs would later be renegotiated down to $50,000 for the first episode and then $30,000 for later episodes. However, Ray Pointer, the author of the book The Art and Inventions of Max Fleischer, American Animation Pioneer, noted in a response to an article detailing the above that, his that in his research he came across a trade announcement that states that the rights were being given to Fleischer Studios after the Republic deal didn't materialize. Max Fleischer had been considering doing cartoons of a more serious nature, and the science fiction nature of Superman appealed to him. Mr. Pointer states that it is not credible to think that a cost of $100,000 was ever proposed in terms of the realistic position that Fleischer Studios was already in. Paramount was owed money by them due to losses in film rentals starting in 1940 due to a year of bad production under the leadership of Dave Fleischer. The cost of $50,000 and $30,000 had actually been included in the 1941 Fleischer contract with Paramount. Mr. Pointer claims that Paramount did not secure the character license for Superman and that Max Fleischer did as he had with Popeye. Now this is verified according to Mr. Pointer in the transfer of ownership documents in 1942 also referenced in his book. Now I haven't read the book but I found these contrarian statements by Pointer to be interesting and I thought they were worth noting. In any event, the Fleischer brothers fully committed their talented studio artists to the Superman shorts and I believe their animation talents are the best of any of their other work. As I mentioned, the Fleischers invented the rotoscope. It's a device that projects and enlarges individual frames filled live to permit them to be used to create cartoon animation and composite film sequences. A classic rotoscope film is A Scanner Darkly, starring Keanu Reeves, which is available on Amazon. Yeah. Each day this disease takes its toll on us, and each day the flow of profits and where they go. Uh, well, it isn't about the profits anyhow, it's something else. Oh, uh, what'd you see happen? The Fleischers plan to use rotoscoping, I think that's the word, extensively throughout the shorts. But they found that Superman's superpowers were impossible to rotoscope, like flying, for instance. The Fleischer animators weren't really used to character animation without rotoscoping. So all the Superman uses his powers scenes were done pose to pose. And following the sketches by the rotoscope artists, younger animators actually drew the Superman power scenes. Each of the Fleischer's Superman shorts follows a similar story structure. A threat is introduced. Lois Lane investigates to get the story. Uh, sometimes Clark objects to it. Lois, Lois ends up being kidnapped by the evildoer. Clark changes into Superman to save her. Superman saves Lois at some point during a big battle. At the end, Lois gushes over Superman while Clark winks at the camera. Now, all the shorts boast great artwork with an art deco look in their backgrounds and layouts. And the use of light and shadows is brilliant, as well as the use of silhouettes. Some analysts believe, and I agree, that the Fleischer look likely influenced the artwork of Batman the Animated Series. Unfortunately, by the end of 1941, Dave and Max Fleischer had a falling out, and Paramount, as a result, decided to remove the brothers from their own company. Now, before they were let go, the Fleischer brothers had produced nine Superman episodes in total, with the focus of each episode story being science fiction. Interestingly, Fleischer Studios was renamed Famous Studios and produced eight more episodes. However, the story themes changed to World War II 
with Superman fighting the Nazis and the Japanese. But finally, the cost of the series and waning interest at the movie theaters led Paramount to end the series. So the Fleischer Superman shorts include only the first nine episodes. Let's talk a bit about the first episode, originally entitled Superman, but more likely known to most today as The Mad Scientist. This first cartoon was released on September 26, 1941, taking six months to complete. And as you might imagine, it began with the destruction of Krypton and Kal-El's escape to Earth. Bud Collier and Joan Alexander, who voiced Superman and Lois Lane in The Adventures of Superman radio show, begun only the February before, reprised their roles for the cartoon series. Hey, you hear that, James Gunn? And Jack Mercer, who voiced Popeye, played the mad scientist. The episode was well received and was nominated for the 1941 Academy Award for Best Short Subject. The story concerns newspaper reporters Clark Kent and Lois Lane being assigned to investigate the threat of a mad scientist who threatens to destroy Metropolis at midnight. Lois flies an airplane out to interview the scientist and, of course, is captured. Let's watch, but stay tuned after the short for some Superman history connected to the Fleischman shorts that you may not be aware of. reaches of the universe, there once existed a planet known as Krypton, a planet that burned like a green star in the distant heavens. There, civilization was far advanced and it brought forth a race of supermen whose mental and physical powers were developed to the absolute peak of human perfection. But there came a day when giant quakes threatened to destroy Krypton forever. One of the planet's leading scientists, sensing the approach of doom, placed his infant son in a small rocket ship and sent it hurtling in the direction of the Earth just as Krypton exploded. The rocket ship sped through star-studded space, landing safely on Earth with its precious burden, Krypton's sole survivor. A passing motorist found the uninjured child and took it to an orphanage. As the years went by and the child grew to maturity, he found himself possessed of amazing physical powers. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive. People to leave tall buildings at a single bound. The infant of Krypton is now the man of steel, Superman. To best be in a position to use his amazing powers in a never-ending battle for truth and justice, Superman has assumed the disguise of Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. Kent, I want to see you. Just received another threatening note. Okay, Mr. White. Lois, another note from the mad scientist. Coming in, Chief. Well, listen to this warning. He plans to strike tonight. Beware, you fools. My electrothanasia ray strikes tonight at 12. Total destruction will come to those who laughed at me and failed to heed my warnings. Beware, I strike at midnight. This nut may prove dangerous. Kent, you help Lois follow up her lead. She may have an angle on this thing. Yes, sir. But, Chief, I'd like the chance to crack the story on my own. Oh, no, no. Thanks, Chief. But, Lois... Chief, don't you think that's a dangerous mission?
at her for the... So, you want the story? I'll give you the greatest story of destruction the world has ever known. Looks like a job for Superman.
great scoop. Yes, Chief. Thanks to Superman. Superman fans may be quick to note that the announcer's depiction of Superman's origin differs somewhat from what we know today. For example, Kryptonians are naturally powerful. No yellow sun radiation is mentioned. Also, there's no mention of the Kents, only that Superman was brought to an orphanage after being discovered by a passing motorist. But remember that Superman had only been published for three years at that point. And the Superman story, if you will, had yet to be told. So the Fleischers produced these shorts to entertain moviegoers before the feature film and used ideas for the character that the comic books hadn't yet considered or thought of. For instance, his ability to fly, his invulnerability, the playful relations between Clark and Lois, which is kind of an adult romantic attraction that the comic books couldn't even do. So what do you think about this first Fleischer Superman short? Let me know in the comments below. Now, some history you may not know. For decades, comic book fans believed that the Fleischer brothers gave Superman the power of flight. As the story goes, the Fleischers thought Superman looked silly leaping tall buildings in a single bound. And they asked National Comics if they could change his power to flight. Now the comic book publisher agreed and Superman has flown ever since. Although the story about asking about flight is true, the fact is that Superman flew on the radio show and in Action Comics number 10, which was due to a mistake by artist Leo Nowak. The Fleischers coined the phrase faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound, which opened the first seven episodes of the series and which was appropriated by the radio series and the live action series a decade later. The Adventures of Superman, faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. The line is still entrenched in popular consciousness today. Now, some exciting news that just came out on March 8th. Warner Brothers Discovery announced that they have remastered Max Fleischer's animated Superman shorts from the original 35 millimeter source elements and will release them in high definition for the first time this spring. Their issue date is tentatively scheduled for May 16th of 2023. Definitely something I'm going to be looking out for and buying. As with the radio show, the later live action serials, movies, and TV shows, the Superman shorts from Fleischer Studios helped to establish Superman's iconic presence beyond the comics. The radio show required the listener's imagination to see Superman fly, stop bullets, and bend steel in his bare hands. Now audiences could see it. The Fleischer shorts served as an important foundation to help build the Superman legend. And this early successful series is an important part about why we're still talking about this character today. Let me know in the comments if you agree. Be well, and I'll see you soon.